A Duff Said is brought to you by Sheldon Street Pizza. Visit them online at SheldonStreetPizza.com or stop by Sheldon's during your next trip to Lake Orion. Sheldon Street Pizza, the official pizza of A Duff Said. And by Fourth Coast Cider Works, quality craftsmanship, quality hard cider. You can check them out online at FourthCoastCiderWorks.com or come get a can or a howler at their Canterbury Village location. Not available for anyone under the age of 21. Please drink responsibly. to the best local sports podcast in Michigan. And that's a Duff said. Thank you, Steve Gale. Now, Steve, of course, is the best high school sports public address announcer in the state of Michigan. And that's a Duff said. Thank you so much for hitting the play button this week on your favorite listening device of choice from wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Duff Tyler. This week, we are talking Oxford High School Boys Basketball. The Wildcats are led in scoring this season by sophomore phenom Jake Champagne. Now this kid is averaging more than 20 points per game. I wanted to know what makes him unique aside from his last name. That conversation starts now. So it seems like every time that I see the tweets about Oxford basketball, particularly on the school page, Jake Champagne, 22 points. Jake Champagne, 23 points. You are really lighting it up, young man. Where did you find the confidence to go out and light up the scoreboard like you have this season? Um, I mean, it was really just playing just ball. I mean, you go outside and you just pretend it's like the backyard and you're just shooting hoops with your dad or something and just playing ball. Now, when this season began, what were some of the expectations that you had for yourself? Did you ever see yourself being the scoring machine that you have become? Um, No, not really. I did not expect that. But I did expect that I did need to, need to score for, in order to, for this team to win. And, um, yeah. Initially, what were your goals for this season? Um, just to win a lot of games with this team. I mean score, just do whatever I can to win. And I'm sure a lot of people have taken notice of what you've been doing this season, both here at the school, your classmates have probably noticed the games that you've been having, the conference probably has as well, and you've probably gotten some attention already for some coaches at the next level. What has all that attention been like, and how have you managed to handle all that? Um, it's It's been nice. I've just kind of kept in the back of my head and just focused on the next practice, the next game, and just keep working my craft. That is the right approach to have, because you're only a sophomore, but how does a sophomore become the guy that is the leading scorer for his team night in and night out, especially someone that plays in a very difficult conference such as the OAA? Um, I mean, it's really just putting in the work, like, me and Coach, we're getting up in the morning and shooting most days in the week. And I think that really helps just to get my shot down and go from there. How would you describe those shoot-arounds with Coach? I'd say it's a high-level practice. Um, we really work and go hard every, every drill. And we shoot a ton. And we work on dribbling in practice, work on finishing moves. Um, we work on defense. And I think that really um, shows in the game for our whole team even. I know he's sitting a few chairs down, but how would you describe him as a motivator and as a coach? Uh, I think he's a great coach. And he always just makes everyone laugh when – you need to and he boosts your confidence and but he'll still tell you what to do and and he does it in just a good way 
He does make me laugh, too. The first time that I had a chance to sit with him, it was a softball game. We had a great time. We got to talk about himself and his family. He is probably one of the best coaches that you could have had in coming into this uh, program. What's it like to be a part of his program and to represent Oxford? Um, I mean, I love it. Uh, I love every part of it. This is a great town. Um, a lot of good people, so to be able to represent that, it's honestly, it's an honor. What does Oxford Strong mean to you? Um, I'm, it, it means more than anything to me. It's bigger than basketball. It's just this whole town just linked up together, pushing through anything that gets in the way. Tonight was 42 strong night, and you guys went out and you had a strong performance against Troy Athens. This was a team that you lost to earlier this season on the road. How important was it for you guys to come out and beat this team on 42 strong night? It was very important. I mean, today was more than basketball. Um, it was all for Big 42 up there, and um, it was just so much motivation to come in and just crush them. I know you're only a sophomore, but did you get a chance to meet Tate? Yes, I did. Um, I got pulled up on the football team freshman year and um, just became buddies with him. And it, he's a great leader and makes me want to be a better man. How would you describe the relationship that you and Tate had? Um, I, we had a pretty good relationship just through football. Um, I didn't see him much in school, but through football, we had a great relationship, and I just respected him so much as a person and a leader. What did he mean to this community? Uh, he meant so much because, as I said, he was a great leader, just a great man, and um, he represented the town, and he just kind of moved people without like being rude about it. He was just a great leader. Tate was obviously such a huge team leader. And now even as a sophomore, you become a team leader for this basketball team. What's it like to have that kind of responsibility and how do you feel you've responded to that? Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's a big responsibility to have because you gotta sometimes someone's down you got to boost their confidence and you can't do it in a way that they're not going to respect you you got to do it in a motivating way when did you first discover basketball um uh when i was i don't even when i could first think <laughs> it was that early huh yeah Your first i thought it was about a basketball yeah i had um my my dad and my uncle both played at ou and um, we just took off basketball right away. What was that relationship with them like, and how much did you learn about the game through them? Uh, I learned pretty much everything I know from them. Um, they teach me pretty much everything, and it was great to have them as like a mentor because they have so much to take in and learn. Obviously, those are two great role models to have. What were some of the pickup games in the backyard and in the gyms like between you guys? Um, I mean, it got really competitive. And, uh, I mean, they just, they'd play the game right, and they wouldn't take it easy on me. <laughs> Let's just say that. But through them, you have become a tremendous basketball player at such a young age, and now you've got two more years on the varsity level here at Oxford. I know you're probably really excited about what the future holds. What's next for you as far as the next two seasons for you at Oxford go? Um, I wanna win everything. I wanna win a league championship. I wanna win a district. I wanna get so far and just win with these guys because these guys are my brothers. And I wanna just have that experience of going through everything together like just like Oxford Strong. What's this group of players like? What's it like to play with them and be a part of this team? Um, we're such a brotherhood. It's, we're so close, we could joke, and then right away we'll take it serious and we'll, we'll be holding each other accountable. And um, it's just a great group of guys to play with and I couldn't ask for anything more.
and you're going to get a shot at a district championship next week. You guys are 12-9 and nine heading into the regular season finale, and then you play Lapeer next week in Grand Blank in the first round of the district tournament. I tell you, if you guys play like you did tonight out there, you are going to be that proverbial team that nobody wants to see come district time. What will it take to come out of that tournament as the champions if you guys continue to play like that? Um, it'll take just grit and making the right moves and playing hard and playing with just passion. So we know that Jake is pretty solid on the hardwood, but how does he do when it comes to playing a game of chess? You'll find out next. If it's pizza night, Sheldon Street Pizza has got you covered. Sheldon's pizzas are always made fresh when you order them, and the readers of the Lake Orion Review have voted Sheldon's breadsticks as the best in Lake Orion. Stop by Sheldon Street Pizza at 3767 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township, or you can order online by visiting SheldonStreetPizza.com. Don't forget to try one of Sheldon's salads with his special blend of homemade salad dressings. He's also got some pretty tasty desserts as well. Sheldon Street Pizza. More than just pizza. It's the official pizza of a Duff set. Okay, I want to take a second now to talk to the parents and adults listening to this podcast. If you are looking for a fun night out during the weekend here in Lake Orion, then stop by Fourth Coast Cider Works. Fourth Coast Cider Works is the place to be for hard cider in Oakland County. Located in the main entrance to Canterbury Village, Fourth Coast is quality craftsmanship, quality hard cider. Stop by Fourth Coast and try some of their many flavors on tap. You can also take some home in a can or a howler. Fourth Coast is open Thursday through Sunday. For a complete list of ciders and hours, go to fourthcoastciderworks.com. Fourth Coast Cider Works. The best hard cider is on the Fourth Coast. Not available for anyone under the age of 21. Please drink responsibly. You have a really unique name, Jake Champagne. Some people have kind of played with that. What are some of the variations and nicknames that people have given you as a result of being Jake Champagne? Um, I mean, they call me sparkling water or sparkling anything drink. And um, I mean, shark. yeah, my <laughs> smiley shark. Yeah. That's that's a that's a bit of a deviation from uh, Jake Champagne. How did you become smiley shark? Um. My teammate Blaine, he's a big nickname guy. He uh, he made it up, and everyone's just kind of picked up on it. And I think it's just because I smile at practice. I don't. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I was surprised to learn that nobody has called you bubbly. I was the first guy to yeah. do that. So hopefully with this, that'll pick up too. But uh, I like Smiley Shark too. Yeah. So let let's stick with Smiley Shark. Who is your all-time favorite basketball player? Um, Michael Jordan, for sure. I just admire everything about him. And you know what's crazy is you're too young to have actually seen him play back in the day, but you've obviously seen a lot of video on him. I'm sure you probably saw The Last Dance and that documentary. What was it about Michael that you really admired and you've tried to emulate in your playing career? Um, just as – his mentality about being a winner, I just love that. And then also his just skill, like he could pretty much do everything he wanted on the court. And he was just a great leader too. We talked about what it's like to represent Oxford, but when it comes to being a member of this community, where is, in your opinion, the best place to eat in Oxford? Um, You know, that's a hard question. I like... Uh, 24th Street Tavern. Um, they got great burgers, and then I also like the Tap. They got great wings. So, those are probably my two choices that 
Everybody that I've talked to at Oxford always tells me how great those wings are, but I myself have never had them. I've had uh, people that I know that have grandkids that go to school here. They're always telling me how great those wings are. If I go have those wings, what, what would you suggest? Um, I like their, they call it Tappy Q. It's just barbecue, barbecue sauce. And um, just their, I think it's just called normal tap. And there's just not really much sauce, but they just season it great, and something about them is just great. There you have it, folks. You have the Smiley Shark Jake Champagne guarantee on that one. How would you describe your pregame ritual? Um, it changes a lot. I really, um, I get here, I, I go in the corner with a couple teammates, and we do a dribbling drill, and then we stretch out. And then we come in here, we get the game plan, and we get locked in, and then we go out there and we warm up. Any music involved in that? Um, no, only on my way here I'll listen to a couple songs. Okay, what do you got to listen to to hype you up for a game? Um, Lil Baby. I like listening to Lil Baby. He'll, he'll really get me hyped up. Final question for you. What are your hobbies outside of basketball? Um, I lo- like at home, wherever, wherever you want, uh, just whatever kind of hobbies you have that don't involve the hardwood and a basketball. I know you've been thinking about it since you were in your crib, but there's got to be more to you than just basketball. Um, I like playing with my friends, just hanging out. Um, maybe playing some video games here and there. I actually just learned how to play chess. So me and my buddies have been really going at it in chess even though I'm not great yet, but I'm going to get there. I have no doubt that you will get there if you approach that with the same intensity that you do out there on the court. <laughs> but how did, did you discover chess? Um, actually, my friend PJ Wozniak, he, um, he introduced me to chess because he plays it on his phone all the time. And I was like, hey, yeah, I'll play with you. I just got to learn the rules. What were those first games like? Uh, did you have any trouble picking the game up, or did you just lose right away? Did you get checkmated right out of the gate? Um, I actually picked up rather fast, and he wasn't expecting it. And um, I still lost, <laughs> but uh, I think I learned the rules quickly. Well, we know there's no ceiling on Jake Champagne, the basketball player, but what's the ceiling on Jake Champagne, the Smiley Shark chess player? Uh, there's definitely a ceiling. <laughs> um, I'm not great at chess at all. So there, there, I cannot see moves ahead really great. All right, well, keep doing what you're doing on the hardwood and you'll be just fine. Jake Champagne, thank you so much for making the time. Best of luck to you next week in districts and the next couple of years here at Oxford. Thank you. Coming up, Oxford boys basketball coach Steve Laidlaw and I talk about Jake's impact on his program. If it's pizza night, Sheldon Street Pizza has got you covered. But if you're sticking to salad, be sure to cover it in one of Sheldon's signature dressings. Sheldon Street Pizza now has homemade ranch, Italian, and Greek salad dressings bottled up and ready for purchase. You can also order a freshly prepared salad from Sheldon because at Sheldon Street Pizza, it's more than just pizza. Order today by calling 248-791-7111 or you can visit them online at sheldonstreetpizza.com or just stop by 3767 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township. If it's pizza time, it's time to go to Sheldon Street Pizza. And that's a tough set. Fourth Coast Cider Works is the place to be for hard cider in Oakland County. Located in the main entrance to Canterbury Village, Fourth Coast is quality craftsmanship, quality hard cider. Stop by Fourth Coast and try some of their many flavors on tap. You can also take some home in a can or a howler. For a complete list of ciders and hours, go to fourthcoastciderworks.com. The best hard cider is on the fourth coast. And that's a tough said. 
not available for anybody under the age of 21. Please drink responsibly. At the time of this taping, Oxford was 12 and 9 after the Wildcats won 69 to 53 over Troy Athens. Oxford won its regular season finale on March 2nd against Berkeley 48 to 37. Jake Champagne ended the regular season strong. He turned in 26 points. Up next for Oxford is a meeting with Lapeer this coming Monday in round one of the districts. I caught up with Oxford coach Steve Laidlaw on Tuesday to talk about Jake's performance this season. What is it like for you to have seen the way that Jake has made this progress that he has in being the scoring machine that he has for this team? Well, it's, it's been really interesting. Um, we are incredibly young. Um, so we needed him to be. Last year as a freshman, we were so um, oriented toward getting the ball into Bryce Essman. So Jake was a feeder. Well, he started getting confidence where he realized he could score. I want to say two of the last three or four games, he scored like 16, 17 points, and then the, the light bulb came on. He had a phenomenal summer, um, plus AAU, and I just think he realized how good he can be. Um, he's still got another level. To go at least at least one um, we just got to get him where he's more consistent um, finishing um, not turning the ball over as much being more of a playmaker but um, he's a relentless worker um, obviously though there, there's things to improve on but in my shock not after watching him this summer they're not shocked at all what were some of your initial impressions of him when you first started to see him play I started working with Jake in eighth grade and I knew right then and there. It was right during this time, during eighth grade, when we were getting ready for districts. And I looked at the varsity coaches and I said, I'm not fooling around. Day one, he's playing varsity next year. And I, I put my trust in him. He hasn't let me down. And um, he's going to lead us to really, really good things. And he's got some great teammates. Let, let's not forget that. Absolutely not. Uh, what have you made a way that he has developed as a leader of this group and the way he's been able to make everyone else around him better. He's, he has developed as a, as a pretty good leader, but he needs, to, he needs to get better in one area. I work with him all the time, just him and me. A great leader brings people with him. So next year, I better be working with three, four, five guys if Jake's a great leader. Um, that's what great leaders do. He's got a great work ethic, but he's got to bring other people, people along. I don't even mind if it's his little brother, Luke. Um, but he's... He tires me out. I burn both ends of the candle with Jake. How have those other kids responded to that challenge? They, they love playing with him. He's, he's friends with everybody. He's, a, he's humble. Um, they're, they're his classmates. I mean, four, four of these kids are his classmates, but the seniors love him because he, he was with us last year. Um, and he's humble. That's, that's what's really special about him. This was a special night for you guys, too. This was 42 Strong Night. Uh, it's near the end of the regular season. How important was it for you guys to rebound from that loss earlier this year to Athens to host them here on your home floor, get a dominant victory, and win one for 42 Strong? Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. The Mir family, Tate, means everything to these kids. Um, they know him. So many of them played football. He's... Um, He's a hero in their eyes. It's how special that young man was. Um, I'm sure I said hi to him several times, but I never really sat down just to talk to Tate. I know his brothers, they're phenomenal people. Um, what, what this is doing in the community is just absolutely special, and I try to support it as much as I can, and I know other people do too. It, it's 42 Strong is just part of our community right now. That's how special it is. With this win tonight, you guys are now 12-9 and nine heading into your regular season finale. You got Lapeer round one in the districts. With the way you guys have been playing lately, I kind of see you guys as maybe the team that nobody wants to see in the district, especially round one. How would you evaluate your guys heading into the districts? Well, we're playing really well. We have not been putting 32 minutes together. We've Royal Oak was very hot, won five in a row. We had them down 16-7. to seven. We gave up the lead just within like two or three minutes of the second quarter. Um, the other night, C. Holmes playing for first place. Um, we had them down 
eight with the ball with six seconds to go before half, miss a layup, they hit a three. Um, then we got up by seven with three minutes to go. And as well as Jake has played the last couple of games, he missed two straight threes that could have got us to 10 or, or 13. Um, tonight, though, you could see the light come on. It's like, this is how good we can play. Let's put it away. And the kids play with tremendous confidence. And that's a wrap on this edition of A Duff Said. Now, during my conversations, I mentioned that Tuesday's game was played on 42 Strong Night. 42 Strong is a mentorship program that was created in memory of Oxford High School student Tate Meir. Now, as you heard, Tate was someone that was loved by everyone who knew him in the Oxford community. Sadly, his life ended way too soon during the Oxford school shooting. Now, if you would like to know more about this organization and make a donation, then please go to 42strongtate.org. Once again, I want to say thank you to Jake Champagne and Steve Laidlaw for making the time this week on A Duff Said. Now, if you would like to hear previous episodes that I've done on this podcast about Oxford, or if you just want to hear any other episode of A Duff Said, then go to my website, aduffsaid.com. If you would like to subscribe to this podcast, then head over to Podbean, Apple Podcasts, the iHeartRadio app, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow this podcast on Facebook. Just check out my page, Sports Journalist Duff Tyler. You can also hit me up on Twitter. Just look for, you guessed it, Duff Tyler. Our announcer this week was Steve Gale, the best high school sports public address announcer in the state of Michigan. As for myself, I'm Duff Tyler, and I'm reminding you that if Duff said it, it must be true, because that's what a Duff said. Thanks for listening, folks. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs>